Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today I would like to talk about how to create this honeycomb structure ring with the bee on the top with the Rhino 3D software. Are you ready? Let's get started. There are two parts of this tutorial. First part, we're going to make this structure and uh, flat and then flow it back to the ring. And the second one, I'm going to use uh, the most easy way to build in this piece right here with some Rhino simple command. So that's starting from the scratch. Whenever we're gonna start a ring, I would like to starting with the ring size. In my demonstration, it's going to be 16 millimeter for the diameter. I need to know how long is this piece, so I'm going to type it length command. It's showing 50.265 right here, and I'm just going to copy this number right here. And then that's coming into the top. I'm gonna draw a straight line, and using exactly the same number, holding my shift to get this length right here. So this is uh, the curve represent this circle right here. So we're gonna do the design about right here. Coming into my top view, I'm gonna starting with the honeycomb structure. So basically, it's going to be a polygon. If you click on a polygon, you can choose what's the number of the side here. So I'm going to make it six and then click on anywhere for whatever size that you think is suitable. In this case, I wanted to have roughly about this size. Okay, so once you have this size, I need to know like uh, what is the thickness that you're going to have. I'm going to offset this one, maybe make it a little bit smaller first and I wanna offset and when I offset, you're thinking about you're gonna have another one next to it. So you don't need to have it super thick, right? So I'm going to offset it for 0.6 millimeter and I'll get something like this. Now, when I have this, I need to give in a thickness, like this is only the curve. So we're gonna come into the solid and then we have extruded planar curve straight. I wanna go into one direction only, so both sides it's equal no here. And then I wanted to set it up for one millimeter. So just type it one, and this is what we have. Now, one thing I wanted to think about, if I'm going to copy from this point to this point, and when you look at the ghost view, you can know that's a two pieces right there. But when you look at the render view, they are just stick together. Without all those lines, they are just completely stick together. So I just cancel the surface edge that you can see now this two is completely stick together. So it looked like it has a double thickness there and it doesn't look good. So what I usually like to do is like what kind of giving a fit edges there. So let's go ahead to using the fit edges and I wanna set it up for something small as long as we can identify. So I'm going to put it 0.2 and all I need to do is fit edges only on the top. All right, so now if you look at it and in my render, you are going to see there are two pieces there instead of just one piece. This is personal preference that, I mean, I don't know if you like it, but it's my personal preference there. All right, so now what I'm going to do is moving this one aligned to my ring. So let's go ahead to using the align tool and then we want align centers. Once you align to the centers, then we are going to uh, starting to making our pattern. I simply just going to use the array, linear array, and I'm going to have maybe 10 of them. And starting from this point, snapping into this point, so I got 10 of them. And I would like to group them together and align to the center one more time. So they are right in the middle. Now I wanted them to go to the top, uh, top row and the bottom row. So I simply just need to copy and copy from this point to this point. And again, you can mirror to the other side or you're gonna copy again from this point to this point. And make sure the end point is snap. All right, I'm going to um, ungroup all of them and delete this one and this one so both ends look the same. All right, if we take a perspective, we need to make sure that they are on the same level. Otherwise, uh, once you flow it, it will be up and down. And maybe that is the design. You want to make certain part. For example, like this one is a bit higher. If you wanted to do that, you can just do 1D scale. 
to make specific part go higher, something like this. So maybe that is the design that you want. So I'm just gonna keep it like this. All right, now the next one is I'm going to creating whatever to the rest of the ring. So that means going to making a box and I want a three point. First point, I mean snapping into this point right here and then moving up over right here and moving up right there and snapping into the end. All right, so this is what I like, and but this might need to be cut it out if I don't like this coming out. So what we can do is we can duplicate the edges of this one, this one, this one. We can cut more if we want to. And then I want to connect it uh, from this point to this point and join all those curves together. And with this curve, I'm just going to extrude it into a solid, something like this, and simply just do the Boolean difference, this one out of this one. All right, so now I have this. Now, if you want the ring to be tapered, we can using the gumball, holding Control, Shift, and click on this one. And I'm just going to one D scale it down so it will match here without changing anything and it will be tapered. It's up to you and see if you like to do that. Once you have that, I'm going to mirror to the other side, make sure you find where the center is for this piece and holding the shift, then you will get something like this. All right, so the ring is ready. You can fit it at the edges if you want to. I'm going to leave that to you. now. If you take a look on my perspective view, you're going to see there's a curve right here on the bottom. This is our reference curve. I'm going to mark it into the red color and I'm going to pick up everybody beside that curve right here and we're going to use the command for flow and we're gonna flow. The base curve will be any of the end and the target curve will be any of the end right there. And as you can see, this is like a uh, going inside of the curve. This is not what I want. So I'm going to click it one more time and click it on the other side of the seam. That will be outside of the ring rail. Now let's take a look on that. The reason it is like sideways is because our seam is right there. It's really simple. Just we, we can just turn it around for 90 degree and then we'll get something like this. Notice that little one piece like is sticky out. That's because this one piece is sticky out right there. So if that is your design, you can continue to work on that. I just want to show you whatever that you have on the design right here will show it right there. Okay, so now that's hiding all this uh, piece that we designed flat. Now all we wanted to do is with the B. All right, so for the B that we have, it's really simple. It's not really reference the B's B's, but it's more likely the look of the B. So I'm going to creating on the side, making a circle. And with this circle, I'm just like 1D scale it down. And then I'm going to create another one here and create another one here. And roughly about four or five pieces and with this one I want to 1D scale it down and this one taper even more and I want to move it in a little bit. All right for this one I want to 1D scale it down. Try to create some sort of the body is fatter and the top and the bottom piece is a smaller. All right so I want to move in this down like this. All right and if you want to moving up a little bit more. Once you select everybody, you like the way you want it, and I want to make them skinnier at the front view. So what we have is this. Now, if you take a look on this and then you see render and see if you like it, if you don't like it, you can continue to edit. Maybe the middle part, you want it to be fatter. Uh, maybe this need to tuck in a little bit more. This need to be inside a little bit more and to find whatever that fitting into your design. Maybe on this one, you want them to be taller as well, and you want to moving up. The bottom is going to stick on the ring, so it doesn't matter. It's even on the bottom, so you can do your own adjustment. Okay, so I'm going to leave it like this. Maybe I will just need four of them, but I'm just going to leave it like this first. All right, now we have the tail part, and we want to have a middle part as the body. So I'm going to come in over here and to draw some curve look like this 
as where to represent the body. And I also wanted to turn on my smart track, align to the first point, coming down to something like this, and then that will be the curve. So for this curve, I want to turn it into the solid. I wanted to come into the surface that you have a revolve. And I want to revolve this one snapping to the end point to the end point for 360 degree. And I'll get this one. All right. So now this is where the body look like. I don't need that inside piece right here. So I'm going to move it up and moving this curve to somewhere else. Now the head, if this is too big, you can adjust it. And of course they are not aligned. So that's coming into the top. Let's go ahead to align everything first. We want to align vertical center. And then I also want to align them with all of this. So we want to align at the front view for horizontal center. So we'll get something like this. All right. Double make sure um, the render view, it will look okay. And of course, this is way too big. I'm going to have it coming down like this. Maybe this piece need to go smaller. All right. So I'm going to leave that to you for you to tweak it, uh, not spending too much time on, on doing this. So you are in charge for the aesthetic part. All right, so now this part could be the head. I'm going to move in this one down just a little bit. All right, so it's not perfect. I don't like it hundred percent, but I, I don't want to spend more time on increasing the video. Um, so I'm just going to leave that to you. Now that's dealing with the wing. For the wing that we can do is I'm going to create something look like this coming over. Like this. All right. So that is one of the wing. And then of course, if you don't like it, you can continue to tweak it if that works for you. And then we want to creating the cross section by using the ellipse. And for ellipse, I'm going to click on the vertical right here and snapping from here to here and how hide it. You can move your mouse or you can just uh, type it the distance that you want. All right, so now we have this. I'm going to using a sweep to rail. So I wanted to split this guy with the point somewhere close to the end right there. All right, so now if I'm going to sweep to, you got rail one, rail two, cross section, and then you will get something like this. Of course, this is getting really, really fat. So let me go ahead to 1D scale it down. And we want to use the cap command to cap it, right? So this is one of the wing right there. And of course, the first wing will be a bit bigger. Let me put it right there to see and moving this one up, maybe a little bit fatter right there and see if that works for me. And I also may want to tilt it something like this. All right. So that will be the first wing. All right. The second wing, you, you can create another piece or you can just making a copy, making it smaller, tilt it a little bit, put it right there. And of course you can uh, change the angle one more time, tilt it this one. All right. So let me double look like this one and maybe changing the angle a little bit more, bring up something like this. All right. So it looked like a bunch of things jamming together, but you have to notice that this is pretty small. Once you're turning into the casting, this is like really small. Um, so the detail will show, will maintain what the form is, um, but you don't need to have that more detail if it is like super, super small. Okay. And we want to mirror to the other side to have something like that. All right. Now for the tentacle, what we can do is I'm going to draw two curve. Curve one going to go from here to here to here and curve two going to go from here to here to here. And basically I'm just going to pipe it. Let's go ahead to pipe it with something really small first, something like here and going a little bit bigger. So that will be the first one. The second one is the same. We'll go something a little bit small first and then we'll go something a little bit bigger, something like this and hit enter and we'll get something like this. Maybe just need a bit thicker and shorter coming down, rotate it 
All right, so that will be the tentacle and see if that you like it. If you do, make sure they are touching. Currently they are not, so I'm going to move it something like that. Simply just mirror to the other side. And then you can adjust the angle if that works. You can do the same thing with the feet right there. If not, the lazy way to do is making a copy and tilt it into the angle that you like, size. And because they are two piece, then you can kind of moving around. If that works for you, go ahead to mirror to the other side. All right, so now I have two and I just need to have a two more feet right there. So I'm going to making a copy to the bottom with the gumball, just hit the all key and this fee, I might want to make it smaller. And again, if you are the B specialist, this is not proportion at all. I'm just trying to make something look like B and uh, for the jewelry purpose, right? For that. Again, you want to check on the thickness if that work okay to you. If you do like it, you can go ahead to bowling. Uh, I'm just going to group it first and moving to my ring and moving to the top of my ring and see if that work. Now, if this is a working for you, the size wise, that's perfect. If not, you might want to uh, change in the size and don't forget it. Whenever you change in the size, the thickness is changing too. You might want to increase in the thickness. This piece is going to be bended right there. This is some curve on the bottom that accidentally to group it. So I'm going to ungroup it first deselect all of this and group it one more time. All right, so this is going to set, in, set it down, but I do not like to have the wing like flying so high there. So what I wanted to do is while I'm grouping them, I'm going to use the bend tool. I'm going to bend from here to moving the wing down. And whenever you do that, you are kind of uh, making the surface a bit more complicated, but that's fine uh, because it's not um, going to increase the file dramatically, uh, just a little bit, but you can continue to bend it, make it, make sure it fitting into the surface that you want. And if you like it, you can tilt it a little bit if that were for you. All right, so this is what I made earlier. It's a bit prettier, but I spent more time on tweaking on it. I hope you enjoy the video. If you'd like to know more about jewelry cat design, I do have a membership, has a lot more video with my trick and tips to share with all the members. Join the membership, hopefully see you there. Thank you for watching and see you next.